Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today I am here in Leicester with Sheikh Sindhi, the man who, alhamdulillah, has created an organization that has resulted in over a thousand uh, new Muslims entering Islam and is also one of the stalwarts and the early pioneers of uh, the you know, Muslim community in Leicester with you know, the uh, Masjid Umar being the, the most, I think, one of the most famous masajid in Leicester. I want to begin by only praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know how Leicester is, mashallah. It's a very strong uh, Muslim community. And alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened the doors and uh, I serve as an imam at Masjid Umar, alhamdulillah, which opened up in uh, the year 2000. And we had uh, Sheikh Subaiti, the Imam of Masjid Nabwi, Sallallahu uh -huh. Alaihi Wasallam, as uh, our guest of honor. And Alhamdulillah, he was at our masjid and as our main guest. And Alhamdulillah, since then, I have been doing khidmat at uh, Masjid Umar. And uh, here, this venue, Alhamdulillah, where we are sitting, it's the Islam Information Center. Yeah. And uh, the reason why we have this venue is so that I feel living in a country like UK, uh, Muslims have a very important responsibility. And uh, that responsibility uh, is not just about uh, financial security for the community, but most importantly is to fulfill the most important amanat that has been given to every one of us and that is to impart deen and Islam to the wider community. Mm. So Alhamdulillah, with that in mind, uh, we established uh, uh, this venue and we have named it as the Islam Information Center. Alhamdulillah. And Alhamdulillah, since 2008, uh, we have been running this center by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think it's great. I mean, we were talking about this uh, earlier where, you know, the, our the Indo-Pak community, mm -hmm. I think the other, other, you know, mashallah brothers in the Muslim community are great, but I think our community is not necessarily as active in giving da'wah to non-Muslims. Yes. Uh, and, and as you were saying, Sheikh, that's, that's the biggest sunnah of Prophet Sallam, right? Uh, and the Quran is full of it, you know, Udu ila sabili rabbik bil hikmah wal mu'idha bil hasana. So many different verses. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah uh, Brother Ibrahim, very, very true. Uh, when we look into the Islamic world, you know, uh, the, the Muslim countries, alhamdulillah, um, from the time of the companions, alhamdulillah, in a very short period of time, Islam spread everywhere. And uh, historically, what we see is that when we are giving da'wah, uh, the Muslim community will always flourish. And uh, when you forget your works and uh, the most important you know, assignment that is given to this ummah, then this ummah can be tested very severely. Mm. So when we look at the Qur'an, I mean, uh, the first pillar, what is the first pillar? The first pillar is the declaration of faith. Mm. And uh, the declaration of faith is telling us that your duty is not only to safeguard your iman, but your duty is to promote La ilaha illallah. Mm. So we take care of our namaz and the other four pillars are all related to amal actions. But sometimes what we see, especially in our Indo-Pak community in the subcontinent, for some reason, uh, we don't take this matter of giving dawah to the non-Muslims as a, a very serious matter, of something course, that yeah. should concern us. You don't have to be qualified. Mm. That is what I've seen. You know, some people actually think that, oh, you know, am I qualified to talk to someone about Islam? Of course, to a degree, you know, we need to have some understanding of Islam, yeah. but it is a, a process of learning. Yeah. When the more questions yeah. are put forward, 
Inshallah, you will want to look for the answers course, yeah. and then you will only get better. And Sheikh, I want to, I want to dive into uh, you know, this, um, the, the da'wah work that you've done. Yes. And, um, you know, of those thousand plus people, mm. alhamdulillah, that have accepted Islam, what are the common, you know, uh, buckets where they come from? So that if we want to, you know, me and the team and others want to replicate that, how do we replicate that, Sheikh? Subhanallah. You have you to know, share the secrets. Yeah. You know, da'wah, giving da'wah is not difficult. I think there's two things which are very, very important. Uh, one, you need an infrastructure. You need a place, a venue. And uh, number two, you need the manpower. You need the right team, the right people. Uh, so people who are quite interested in talking to people about Deen, you know, that passion should be there. Mm. And uh, you will be surprised, you know, what you need to look at is the fact that Allah gives hidayat to whom he wills. Sometimes I have seen here, a person who's sitting here has said that, okay, I want to become a Muslim. Can I go upstairs and just wash my face, do a bit of wudu or use the, the bathroom? And we say, fine, you can go upstairs. And uh, by going upstairs and when they come down, they've changed their mind and they say, I don't want to become a Muslim. This tells you it is only Allah who gives hidayat. Mm. And then there are certain people who you least expect, who probably just came for... Uh, a question that they had in their mind or something that's uh, bothering them and you answer and then you start talking to them and you see tears flowing from their eyes and they want to become a Muslim. So it is very, very amazing. I think how you are going to speak to people, that is very important. Mm. Your dialogue, uh, you know, your communication skills, uh, are very, very important uh, because the Quran says that, that, you know, invite the people with wisdom. Mm. So until you don't have wisdom, uh, it's very, very difficult uh, because you have all sorts of people that will ask you, you know, different questions. And you've got to speak to them in a very logical manner. Mm. You know, it's not about this is what Islam says, but you've got to speak to them. Why has Islam asked you to do this? What is the benefits? Yeah. yeah so yeah, when yeah. you break up the benefits, you see, it's easy for them to understand. Oh, yeah, I see yeah, 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 yeah. that, uh, you know, this is what is required from uh, for, for me to do in Islam. So once they feel that, no, it's a, it's a very natural religion, and people fail to understand this. Allah says, Fitrat Allah, Fitrat Allah illati fataran nas. That this is the only religion that Allah has selected for humanity and uh, it's a natural way of living. Yeah. yeah. So, because it's a, you know, a natural way of living, you will always find that there are people naturally they will incline towards Islam. Iman and Islam. So, sure. Sheikh, how do they find you? How do these people come across to you guys? Yeah. So, Brother Ibrahim, what it is, Alhamdulillah, we are not uh, uh, a very big team. Uh, we are a group of people that are volunteers. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, you know, Allah has been very, very merciful. Uh, from the masjids and from the friend circle and in Leicester, of course, people know that we've got uh, yeah. uh, the Islam Information Center. And uh, if anybody wants to ask us any questions, so they can do so. Uh, and uh, subhanAllah, this is how it's promoted. And Sheikh, how do you think about, um, you know, there's this, I guess, eternal debate within the da'wah community about, you know, is the thing that ultimately, you know, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who guides, but is the part of the brain that you want to be thinking about the rational side or the emotional side or both? How, how do you, how have you seen it in your experience? You know, what's the thing that ultimately triggers someone to, uh, you know, become a Muslim? 
Yeah, I think there is one uh, very beautiful verse of the Quran uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innul kuloob. When we look into the Quran, you see the Quran is a revelation and the revelation is the highest source of knowledge and therefore everything goes back to the Quran and when we ponder upon the verses of the Quran here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the body can be kept happy by worldly things you know maybe the food that you eat you know the drinks that are there anything that is going to serve your physical body but uh, out there in the world I think a lot of people are looking for what we call sukoon, contentment. Mm. Yeah. And that is missing from their life. I think in the modern world, uh, people are extremely confused. Mm. And the more you f- turn your back from nature, and when I say nature, I mean Islam, uh, it becomes extremely difficult for a person to navigate himself into the right direction. And then sometimes in his life, you know, uh, when Allah wants to give hidayat, he's there thinking that, you know, I'm not satisfied. Hmm. There is something that I require. And Alhamdulillah, you know, when that understanding of spirituality, understanding that, you know, how am I going to fulfill myself and how am I going to be happy uh, then that is where religion plays a very important role and uh, alhamdulillah you know people understand that uh, Islam is the answer to all your problems spiritually you know people want something they're, they're looking for something you know uh, there are so many people out there in the world when you look at finance when you look at uh, dunya they have everything but the one thing they don't have is that they are still unhappy Mm. and they are looking for something that will trigger in them you know this happiness that i am fill that gap Mm. that i am happy and this gap only comes when you utter la ilaha illallah Mm. Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and your body and mind have to understand what you have just said the declaration of faith and the more you practice mashallah the more you will feel better shifting slightly from the dawa topic to um, you know institution building mm. right because you've had experience of doing this IIC and then you've had in experience of seeing how Masjid Umar developed and you know w- leading that how, what are, what's the key things that you know someone who's looking to build a lasting institution that's you know properly stable and you know in uh, growing itself what are the you know what are the lessons and things that people can look for yeah. I think in the UK, Alhamdulillah, you know, when the first batch of Muslims that arrived in UK, at that time, when we look at the Sunnah uh, to lay the foundation of Iman and Islam, anyway, uh, the most uh, important institute has to be the House of Allah, of course, the Masjid. Uh, And when I say Masjid, obviously, Masjid would include also the Madrasa. And uh, Alhamdulillah, when the Muslim community came here, uh, the masjid was important, madrasa was very important, and also halal food Mm. was very important for the community to survive. And I think Alhamdulillah, you know, that was um, tackled properly. Alhamdulillah, the communities understood. But most importantly, um, I think now we need also Um, centers like this Mm. Uh, you know centers where people can come and ask questions yeah so these are things that are very very important Mm. Um, there's no general rule why because every country is quite different and we need to adapt to the requirement uh, of that time 
So Alhamdulillah, you know, in, in cities like Leicester, we've got so many masjids. And sometimes, it's my personal view, uh, I don't think we require so many masjids. You understand Punjabi, Sheikh? Yeah, and not too much, but I, I think I will understand. <laughs> this one you will. Uh, there's a, a shir by Bulle Shah uh, that my, and my mother-in-law taught me. Ek paase mere rehen wahabi, ek paase diyo bandi, aage piche shia sunni daadi firka bandi. Vich vachale saada kota, kismat saadi mandi, ek mahalla aat masita, kedi karapa bandi. Subhanallah, I understand that really well, what you said. But you are absolutely right. And I think what happens is that, you know, we don't require so many masajid, masajid, alhamdulillah, you know, just... If you walk this side, you've got one masjid, you walk that side. And then also what happens that, uh, Alhamdulillah, there's too much of the finance element that is, you know, going into one area where surely we could have made use of that. Doing something uh, else. Doing something yeah. else, which would have been a requirement. Yeah. So for an example, you know, uh, we need uh, uh, areas where uh, Muslim children can play. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we've got our own setup, uh, things like that, you know, uh, football, indoor football and things like that, uh, swimming. All of these things are very, very important. So as a Muslim community, uh, if we try to have that independency uh, so that, Alhamdulillah, we've got everything. We don't need to use any other facility. It's in-house. This would be really well. Absolutely. You know, this would be very, very uh, important for us. But I personally feel that right now, um, living in this country and looking at how the world is changing so rapidly, uh, if we are not going to be inviting the wider community to Islam, then this will have a very negative impact on the community. Agreed. And uh, this is a must. Yeah. We have to do that because it's our first pillar. Yeah. And so we require, you know, people, alhamdulillah. Um, on this subject, uh, Brother Ibrahim, it's not just about somebody taking the shahada. Yeah. You know, we, we sometimes get very happy somebody has become a Muslim. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, and we should. But most importantly is... Uh, the aftercare. Yeah, integration. Integration, that, look yeah. after them, you know. Financially. So you need it. people who are going to, you know, be looking after this community. Absolutely. There's a charity that, um, you know, I recently came across called, I think called some New Beginnings. Or beginnings up in, I think they're based in Manchester, but they're kind of online. Okay. Uh, all run by reverts. SubhanAllah. And uh, they just run camps and, you know, education sessions online and in person for reverts. Oh, sorry, not reverts, for in people interested in Islam and reverts. Right. And they said that half of the people who actually do their courses are non-Muslims right. who become Muslims. And then the other half are new reverts who are looking to learn and, you know, they're finding that community. Because I think that it's difficult, right? Because culturally, if you're not from a certain background, mm. sure, you might accept the religion, mm. but it's you know, if you don't culturally fit mm. uh, and you don't have that support network, it's very difficult to... Yeah. yeah, it's very difficult. But I think on this issue, uh, sometimes uh, what we say is that uh, what have the Muslim community offered uh, to the revert community? Uh, I think our revert uh, brothers and sisters uh, will have seen, especially in Leicester, that mashallah, when the Muslim community knows that someone is a revert, then uh, you know they are always ready to support. Them. Yeah, that's true. That's and this true, is yeah. something that's uh, very good, alhamdulillah, in our community. So whenever there is a shahada, alhamdulillah, that takes place in the masjid, uh, everyone in the masjid will want to meet him, yeah, embrace him, course, hug yeah. him, alhamdulillah, and you know the smiles that are there. Yeah. So this is brotherhood. Absolutely. And this is something that's very important. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Sheikh, once again, really appreciate your time. Uh, 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 may may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from you and you know the decades that you put into the you know the work of the deen. Uh, barakallah fi. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair.